I will make it easier for you to get it through your computer. Then this will be the session where you don't get to get roped in so much. Good morning. We're not expecting tons of people here, so I would appreciate it if few people moved over to our side of the world, <laughs> even if you're doing email. <laughs> I thought you were going to say we're not expecting a lot of people, so are you sure you're in the right place? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with some humor. Oh, this is much nicer. Cozy. This is also a, um, a note-taking free working group. That the chair, one of the chairs that we take the notes instead of like trying to trick for attendance. All right, 9.31. We actually have a bunch of people on me to go. <laughs> Don't feel pressured or, or do with you. Or do. All right. Good morning, everybody. Gnap in Prague. Uh, you've seen the note well before, I'm sure. It also applies here. Today we have a single agenda item, and that's an uh, update uh, by uh, the editors. Uh, Justin is here with us, and he will be talking about the Gnap core protocol and the resource server uh, draft. And then if uh, time allows, any other business. Um, anything else people would like to talk about before we start? I guess that's a no, Justin. Yeah, I'd like to do that. I mean, that's like my entire presentation on this slide right now. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. And thank you for communicating all the comments. I knew it was a lot of work. No, thank you. It's a, it's a long document. Thank you for the thorough review. <laughs> well, is that or make it into 13 documents like we did with OAuth 2? <laughs> Slides, <laughs> and you should have control. <laughs> All right, yes, I have control. Awesome. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Prague. Um, my name is Justin Richer, and uh, this is GNAP. So uh, today we're basically going to go over the changes since uh, the last meeting in San Francisco for both the core and, excitingly, the RS draft. So uh, the diffs are here, which we probably will click into in in a bit, um, but I'm going to basically give a, a uh, an overview first before we go into that. Um, the core draft changes, we got a, a fantastic AD review, it was very thorough, uh, picked up a, a, lot of, a lot of stuff that was either ambiguous or unclear, um, and so anything that Anything that kind of looked like a normative change, there was a change to normative language, was actually capturing the intent of the text that just wasn't spelled out there pretty much. So uh, I functionally considered it no normative changes in that. Uh, this was all posted out to the list with explanations uh, in GitHub for all of these things. And uh, we are waiting for some feedback on things like, uh, I think nonce sizes and timeouts and just what the best current guidance is for that. I am not the expert for that. So whenever we get guidance for what those things should be, we'll, uh, we'll get there. And it is now in IESG review. Uh, we've received the first review. Fabian and I have read that over and uh, we're discussing how to uh, adjudicate each of those comments in there. Uh, we don't actually think that there's anything, uh, to us at least, it doesn't seem to be anything major changes. It's just a lot of clarifications, which might be some text changes to make sure that the next person that reads the draft actually gets the right idea of the text, which is kind of the whole point of writing a standard. Uh, so yeah, very exciting that this is finally an ISG review. It's been a long time coming. 
Now, on the RS draft, uh, as we promised at the last IATF, uh, we really buckled down and went through uh, the core issues to figure out uh, what we were going to do with them. And uh, in most cases, it was really just a lot of uh, a lot of kind of grunt work, uh, getting in there and figuring out, um, you know, filling out the IANA section, clearing up the introduction and abstract, and things like that that needed to be done, but just got backburnered for such a long time as the uh, as the core took the spotlight. Um, so lots of text changes in the RS draft. Um, most of it is expansion of the existing text. Uh, a couple of new things that I wanted to highlight here. And uh, again, all of this has been posted to the list. Um, one of the first, the biggest set of changes is we now have security and privacy considerations. This has been a to-do for a long time, obviously something that we need. Um, I asked when people uh, review this section of the text, remember that this is looking at it from an RS-focused view. So uh, things where the, cl uh, the client has to consider something or the AS considers how it's dealing with the client, um, you know, those types of privacy, those things and security, those things belong in core. These are things that the RS and AS. So for example, if you're using token introspection, then every time the RS calls the AS for token introspection, that's sending a signal to the AS that the token is being used. This is a privacy consideration. In many systems, it's something that you actually want to have, but you need to be aware that this is something that is, that is being signaled uh, because not every system um, fully trusts the AS with, uh, with that knowledge of where all of the tokens are being used in real time. Um, if you have a more distributed system, that's definitely a consideration. Um, oh, and, uh, and things like uh, if you put tons of information into, into the access token that the uh, RS can read, for example, you have a token that can go to like five different RSs, then each of those RSs, if they're capable of reading the token, you're telling it about what's capable at all of these other RSs. Even if it's key bound, that leaks information. And uh, this is one of the reasons why GNAP allows for multiple access tokens to, if, if this is something that matters in your ecosystem, you can really scope that down very tightly. We've seen that with the Open Payments Group and, uh, and the like. And in the, uh, I know the Verified Me implementation does something similar for this reason. But it's something that you need to consider, you know, something you need to be aware of, which is exactly the point of the security considerations. This is our first time actually expanding this section out. I'm sure we've missed some things. Please take a read through what's there. If there's stuff that is missing, please uh, you know, post to the list, post an issue to GitHub, or even better, post a pull request and uh, provide some text so that the editors can actually incorporate that. Justin, yes. quick, do you want us to like, request an early review from the security director? Uh, for the RS? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. It's, uh, the RS draft is a relatively simple draft because it's largely laying out a set of uh, sort of options and patterns. Um, and uh, so instead of it being a single cohesive protocol like core, it's, um, it's, it's more along the lines of, you know, here's a bunch of things that you could do. So we, we do have a member of the sec the, uh, security directorate that's still reeling from the core draft. <laughs> they don't have to send it to the same person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Roman agrees, early review. And yeah, no, um, sounds great to me. Um, okay. One kind of a uh, larger functional change is that we expanded a lot of the discussion about uh, AS specific tokens. Now, one of the things with GNAP is that the AS provides its own set of APIs. Some, a lot of those are client facing. So like uh, the, uh, the grant uh, management and continuation API, the token management API, things like that. Um, but we also have a bunch of RS facing APIs. This includes introspection, resource registration, and even discovery. And previously, uh, the text in the RS draft had been pretty hand wavy about you need to protect it by authenticating using one of the authentication mechanisms in GNAP Core. Uh, but one of the things that we realized is that you actually um, 
can also it very reasonably uh, interpret that to mean you could protect it with its own access token, just like the other AS hosted APIs that are client facing. And this idea um, is actually not new to GNAP. This is actually how uh, UMA user managed access does its RS facing API stuff. Um, so the, uh, the resource registration endpoint, I think is what UMA calls it, if I remember correctly. And so we added in a clause that says to do that. And in doing so, it kind of calls out the fact that we now have these classes of tokens that don't face external RSs, should not be used at an external RS, but face APIs uh, that are meant to be used with APIs that are hosted by the AS itself. So we call those out specifically and uh, call them out as uh, you know limited security artifacts, um, including this one for all of the RS facing APIs. Now, the details of how you get that, uh, we've placed out of scope for this. I believe it should remain out of scope for the RS draft because it's basically get a GNAP token somehow. Um, and that's up to your ecosystem. If uh, somebody really believes strongly that that should be uh, specified more tightly, please bring that up on the list. And um, ideally, again, provide text so that, uh, so that we can incorporate something like that. Um, the biggest thing that we wanted to do here, and this goes hand in hand with the uh, security considerations, which uh, also reflected uh, an expansion of some of the text in core, is that these particular access tokens should never be received by a resource server. Um, the AS should be minting different access tokens for each of these APIs and never handing out the same access token to be used across uh, itself as well as other resource servers. Uh, the reason for this being all of the reasons we talked about for token information leakage and usage uh, previously. Um, so this, again, a bit of a normative change, but it also was kind of an expansion of what the, um, what the intent of the resource server facing API was uh, to begin with. So any thoughts or questions on that? Because we are just about wrapped. OK. It's going to be a short meeting. All right, and finally, um, uh, Yaren actually pointed out something that has, uh, that has been obvious to me for years now, but realized wasn't actually spelled out in the draft at all. Um, this is a feature that goes all the way back to the original XYZ prototype, um, so pre-GNAP. Um, and that is what you do with all the bits of information in the resource set registration uh, piece. So uh, hopefully this is spelled out better in both the normative text and examples now. Um, but what happens is when you're doing a dynamic resource set registration, the RS tells the AS, hey, I've got this set of resources that I want to protect. And you get back a resource set identifier. Then when the client shows up and uh, doesn't have an access token that's good for that set of resources, the RS can hand back to the client, this is the access identifier that you need to use in order to reach me. And this is an opaque identifier. It doesn't, uh, doesn't actually spell out the details of it, but it's supposed to be good enough for the client to be able to do whatever it was doing at the resource server at that time. Which means that the client turns around and requests a token for that using the access array. So this is a resource uh, access reference field, um, along with all of the other objects with types and actions and all of that other stuff, you can send this as a string-based resource uh, access request. And then the AS can map that to the resource set that was uh, described and registered by the resource server in the first place. Um, so this was the pieces were always intended to fit together like that, um, but this was never actually written down anywhere. It's written down now. Um, hopefully that makes sense, but because it's new text, again, please take a look at it and make sure that uh, it is clear that that's how this information is intended to flow through the system. Um, 
this uh, takes inspiration again from the UMA. Um, is it uh, distributed resource set authorization? Distributed authorization system, I think it's called. Um, I'm totally blanking on the name. Do you remember, Leif? Yeah. Look. Um, anyway, it takes ins inspiration from that a little bit, but fits into GNAP's uh, native uh, resource request mechanism that allows us to do this in a, in a way that will make sense to GNAP clients. Um, and that is actually pretty much all I had. We think that the RS draft is close to working group last call. I would really like more eyes on it in the working group first before we uh, try to make that declaration. But it's not that complex. There's not a lot of moving parts there. Um, there's a decent amount of text, but again, it's all sort of separate pieces and options. That's it's it's kind of like a menu for resource servers that want to connect in different dynamic ways. So at this point, um, the editors think that the that we're pretty close to working group last call. An early review would be great to uh, sort of confirm that uh, we're going in the right direction there. And uh, I'm hoping that we can actually get into uh, last call before Brisbane and, um, and wrap that up. We've got a couple of issues left in the issue tracker uh, that Fabiana and I have uh, talked about. We know basically where we want to go with those issues. And um, yeah, that's that. So uh, Justin, just to be clear, you're hoping to finish up. Um, so we, do you, are you hoping for a meeting in Brisbane or are you hoping not to have a meeting in Brisbane? I mean, if we can get far enough that we don't have to have a meeting in Brisbane, that would be great. Uh, I have a feeling we probably will, uh, but you know, probably a short meeting yeah. uh, because I would like us to be, uh, in if not past working group last call by then and have us be able to say these are the last set of changes okay. that we've been making give that readout and go on with the day and are we expecting a new version uh, you said there's still a few a few issues uh, open yeah um so we we will be expecting at least one new version of rs and um uh, to uh, to address the the couple of open issues, but um, I strongly encourage people to review what's there um, because we did publish a new version just before um, just before this meeting, um, and uh, you know it it does have a lot of changes uh, there. So um, more eyes on that sooner. Don't you know, don't wait for the next version. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, one more thing that I forgot to mention, uh, the core protocol is still in I ITF last call for another mm -hmm. few days. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't yet, please take a read. Just yeah. a quick one. It's over 200 pages. Yeah, just a small couple hundred pages. It's, it's fine. Although I am proud to say a lot of that is examples. Uh, hi, this is Roman Danilio, the, the SEC AD for this working group. I didn't jump in the queue. So in terms of kind of procedurally, there is actually plenty of time still for review. It is an ITF last call. The next step is it's going to go to the ISG. The problem is, of course, that the ISG time bounds uh, what, what's read at every kind of telechat. The next telechat is November 30th. And due to the length of this document, I can't even put it on the 11th kind of 31, even if everything was ready, which means we're now in mid-December. So there are a number of weeks that folks could still review this and provide feedback. So please don't hesitate to do so. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, you know, I can speak for the editors. We are looking at the comments as they come in and, you know, we, we plan to uh, address all those. All right. Yeah, please close us off. I think that's it. So um, to sum up, we're, we're, we are working our ways towards like, finishing the work. Mm -hmm. And it's always the hardest, right, in a working group where you've done good work and you actually need to finish everything, right? So let's just get that done. Uh,
this and we will help by getting early review of the from the uh, security director so we, we don't have to get stuck on that and with that i think oh actually one last bit oh. that i remember um this is just a little bit of a positive note um had a conversation uh with uh, another implementer out in the wild they unfortunately can't uh cannot list their implementation in the implementation section due to company policy stuff like that um but uh they came into the can app space for a lot of the same reasons that we've been seeing other implementations uh there's like little key bits and differences that uh that really matter to them and um so this particular person is hoping that they'll actually be able to open source their implementation but they can't even talk about it publicly yet so I'm, I'm in the very awkward position of like, I know that this exists, that I'm excited that it exists, and I might be able to show you someday, but I can't even tell you where it is right now. But it does exist, trust me. Yeah, I can add that we have an implementation ourselves that will go into production for a fairly large K through 12 national testing scheme. So mm -hmm. it, we actually get quite a lot of use. In, in our case, the use case is super simple, right? right but yeah. it's still, that's what attracted us to GNAP, that it's so super simple conceptually, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and speaking about uh, implementation sections, uh, do we or did we have an implementation status section in core? We do in core, we don't in the RS draft. Okay, so that needs to go before we publish as RFC. I suggest that's that's uh, the, the process for, for implementation status sections. I, happen to have written uh, the RFC. Um, so that doesn't stay in the RFC. I suggest that you move it into, uh, into a wiki on, on GitHub. Oh, OK, to save the information. Yeah, OK, that's fair. It's like, I, I knew it came out. I thought the RFC editor did that for us. But, but yeah, we'll make sure that they that's captured. remove it. They are not going to, to open the, gotcha. the wiki. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, we have the working group wikis on GitHub that I think we can do. Yeah, Roman, yeah. I mean, exactly to this idea of like, what will be durable if you put it in the wiki, it will still be there when you publish your RFC. It's it's gone, so you would have to go to the old ID, which is, I think, what you're on is kind of reminding us of. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, makes sense. So, um, yeah, the editors will make a point to do that. All right. Go All right. Once, going twice. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Thank you. Oh, you uploaded it? Or I mean, you just do it in the head stop. Yeah. yeah. Automatically. No, I mean, um, <laughs> In the meeting materials, did you press the button? No. You need to import it from Hedgedog. It's only one blue button. Go to materials. Not this one. Oh, yeah. I can't remember how to get there correctly. Import. There you go. Yeah. Makes sense. So, when we. Okay, two buttons. Good. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to just stick to me. I was like, I'm talking about. We can. We can. Yeah.
Uh, yeah, as far as I know, they are, uh, they're they not planning on doing anything for right now. But, uh, and, uh, they do, Microsoft does a lot of weird stuff with graphs uh, after after they realize they actually did it. So they've got a pretty big influence. 